at Aruena, we met a party of Namaquaras. They were originally exceedingly hostile and suspicious, but Colonel Rondon's unwearied thoughtfulness and good temper enabled him to avoid war and to secure their friendship and even their aid. He never killed one. Nowhere in Africa did we come across wilder, or more absolutely primitive savages, although these Indians were pleasanter and better featured than any of the African tribes at the same stage of culture. They were practically absolutely naked. Among these Nabaquaras, the women were more completely naked than the men, although the difference was not essential. Man-eating fish, piranha. They are the most ferocious fish in the world. Even the most formidable fish, the sharks or the barracudas, usually attack things smaller than themselves. But the piranhas habitually attack things larger than themselves. They will snap a finger off a hand incautiously trailed in the water. They mutilate swimmers. In every river town in Paraguay, there are men who have been thus mutilated. They will rend and devour alive any wounded man or beast, for blood in the water excites them to madness. On February 27, 1914, shortly after midday, we started down the river of doubt into the unknown. We had seven canoes, all of them dugouts. The actual surveying of the river was done by Colonel Rondon, with Lyra and Kermit as their assistant. My canoe ran ahead of the surveying canoes. Now and then, the swift water hurried toward ripples that marked ugly spikes of sunken timber or toward uprooted trees that stretched almost across the stream. Then the muscles stood out on the backs and arms of the paddlers. As stroke on stroke, they urged us away from and past the obstacle. It was interesting work, for no civilized man, no white man, had ever gone down or up this river, or seen the country through which we were passing. I did my writing in headnet and gauntlets. Insects were altogether too abundant, and even when traveling slowly, it was impossible always to avoid them, not to speak of our constant companion, the bees, mosquitoes, and especially the barachadas, or blood-sucking flies. Now, while bursting through a tangle, I disturbed a nest of wasps whose resentment was active. Now I heedlessly stepped among the outliers of a small party of carnivorous foraging ants. Now, grasping a branch as I stumbled, I shook down a shower of fire ants. And among all these, my attention was particularly arrested by the bite of one of the giant ants, which stung like a hornet so that I felt it for three hours. Canoe rigged with a cover under which I traveled when sick. The effects of fever still hung on, and the leg, which had been hurt while working in the rapids with a sunken canoe, had taken a turn for the bad and developed an abscess. Good doctor, to whose unwearied care and kindness I owe much, had cut it open and inserted a drainage tube. An added charm being given the operation and subsequent dressings by the enthusiasm with which the Piams and Borashadas took part therein. I could hardly hobble. It was pretty well laid up. But no man has any business to go on such a trip as ours unless he will refuse to jeopardize the welfare of his associates by any delay caused by an ailment or weakness of his. It is his duty to go forth if necessary on all fours, till he drops.